This is a 2019 Mini Cooper convertible, and I'm going to tell you why it is a better car than you might I think. I rented this Mini Cooper here in Martha's Vineyard because obviously I wanted to rent something and make uh, some content for the channel. However, the rentals here are not very interesting. They're just like Jeeps, Kias, and Mini Coopers. So I thought, why not do a Mini Cooper? And this is what we got. An overview of the Mini Cooper. The Mini Cooper was was launched all the way back in like the 1950s uh, by John Cooper. This car was like this, it was like a small, tiny hatchback. And over the years and decades, they have changed the Mini Cooper and made it bigger, bigger and bigger. So, and this was the redesign they did back in 2014. And even though some people don't really like the redesign, I actually quite now, really the start like The price of the Mini Cooper is $23,000 here in the United States. However, if you want the convertible version, that starts at around $28,000. And there are three trim levels, the Cooper, Cooper S, and John Cooper Works. I here just have the base model Cooper, but the more sporty Cooper S and John Cooper Works are the lot better options. Today I'm gonna take you on a tour of the Mini Cooper convertible to tell you why it is a better car than you might think from going through its quirks and features to tell you why it is a better car than you might think. A very unusual key fob. It is a circle which kind of fits with the car. More about that in a minute. And you have your normal unlock and lock buttons which I find is just a kind of weird interesting key fob for the back of the Mini Cooper specifically the trunk of the car. Now if you pull the trunk it automatically latches and then it goes down for some reason. Now and you see that it does not have a lot of space in this Cooper model. That is because the top has to fold in this flat bench up here. So that's why they had to make it this small back here. But the real reason why they had to do this tailgate issue, this reason, is because that when the top folds down, it's going to interfere with the, the trunk going up. So they had to have this tailgate in the back. I kind of like it, but specifically, Mini does not want you to sit on this because these will break and it will cause you and it will cost you a lot of money to fix. Specifically, there's a warning right there sitting 24 hour when you outside assistance. It also says do not sit on the back of this thing. So even though that I kind of want to, I can't. I want can't. to the interior of this car, which is specifically to start off with the seats. The seats are very comfortable. They're actually leatherette and you don't actually get that in a lot of cars these days. Having standard as a leatherette interior is better than fabric or cloth. But I want to start off with the seat specifically that in every single mini model the seat is manual. Now I don't know why the seat is manual. This is, is, a, is this car can be optioned up to $30,000 and some of them can go over $50,000 and the seats will never be electric. I don't know why they decide to do this, but that is the mini way of having manual seats. In the interior to the toggle switches, there are a lot of them. Instead of normal buttons that this car uses, they use toggle switches, like the ones down here for auto start stop, the st start engine stop button, as well as the uh, auto start stop and the trash control off. They're even up here for the dome lights and the map lights, and even to put down the roof. However, to get for option you didn't get it's just a hole so if you didn't get a certain option for a toggle switch for example this one right up here that would be the ambient lighting this car doesn't have it so it's just a hole these two down here well i don't know what they are because they're blank so even i wish mini still included the actual toggle switches but they just wouldn't work but I only see Mini that doing it. How you start the Mini Cooper. So you all you used to do in the older models is have a key, you put it somewhere right there, and you push it in, and the vehicle, the car rolls to life. And now instead it's all keyless. So instead you put your foot on the brake, and then the start stop button glows red. You take it, your foot off the brake, it glows a darker red. Brake red, bright red, off. Bright red, dark red, bright red, off. I find this very amusing, but anyways, put it from the brake and then click the button, the toggle switch up or down to start. Very interesting quirk is the top. You put it down with this toggle switch like a sunroof. So you pull it back and in a matter of seconds, it goes all the way back and then it stops. Now this is basically Mini's version of a sunroof. So even though you get a convertible, you still have a sunroof. I feel like this looks pretty idiotic because even if you come out from the outside, 
the top is just rolled up like this, and I don't really like the look of it. But to put the roof down fully, you have to click it again, all the way back, and then the windows drop, and then the top fully comes down. Which, I mean, I get that Mini is trying to, you know, be a company to the first to being like having a sunroof in a car, but to me, I don't like that feature, and I feel like that uh, the Mini, if it's gonna be convertible, it should be convertible. Leave the sunroof option to normal hardtop roof Minis and a lot of other. You guys have been wondering about it, the big circle. That's what I've been wanting to get into for the longest time, but this is the big circle I have been talking about. So. Obviously, as you can see, this was used to be where mini speedometer would go, but cars got more high tech. Now it comes with a touch with a screen. However, it's not touch screen. You use it like a BMW iDrive system, and there are a lot of quirks with it. First of all, is this ring light? This ambient light strip changes in a lot of different colors and different ways. First of all, is the AC. If you want to have the AC on, this little white strip goes all around as you can see now let's say so instead of looking down here when you're driving now let's say if you want it to be a little bit cold yep that's right it turns from one side on this side to be red one side on this one to be blue and you can adjust the temperature from your ring light i find this such a unique feature and i find this just a really cool feature in general to have the, the ring light interact with the air conditioning but that's not all with the with the modes, it changes from blue to green to the blue again to blue again and then to red to go with the music. But that's also not all because even with this car, you can actually have the volume be controlled with the screen. As you can see, it gets orange depending on the, the volume. I find this just really cool in general. The circle also tells you if you're getting close to something on the backup camera, it will show you red, green, yellow, depending on how close you are to the object behind you. You may know that BMW owns Mini Cooper, so the I, the system here is kind of very similar to a BMW. Now, it is very, very similar in D. I mean, you have uh, a switch down, a control panel down here that you can do um, that you can switch and it's kind of cool in general. However, I mean you kind of expect this for a car that's owned by BMW. Now I want to go into some aspects within the screen. I want to start off with my mini. This is where you could customize your vehicle settings and stuff like that. Now um, it's very, very nice and intuitive. It's very easy to use for someone who doesn't like cars and just like the Mini Cooper in general. I want to go into something called Mini Connected. Now, Mini Connected is basically a uh, a car a talk chat for your car. So if your car is on is on the side of the road somewhere, you can click Mini Assist, and they'll send you another Mini out to, to help you. Kind of cool. Let's move on to down here, and even in a thirty-three thousand dollar car, you still have blank buttons. Now, obviously, these buttons, the buttons for Mini Options, are a lot of money. Mini Options are actually pretty cheap, so the car doesn't go up that much if you go with a base model car. But you still have blank buttons. I mean, I don't know why you have blank buttons in a car this high price but i mean i kind of find it interesting that a car like this has now blank let's move buttons on to the door handle and that's because of the door handle is a half circle that's not really unusual but the door handle is integrated with the lock and unlock buttons for the car as you can see they go with the door handle and I find it just a really cool feature that instead of having it just down here somewhere, it's up here. I find that kind of cool that Mini integrated with now the let's door. Talk about the window controls, because there's quite a bit of a flaw with them, and it's a very interesting quirk that Mini decided to do. So you have your normal window switch for this window, and then you have your normal window switch for this window. Very simple, right? Then you have the windows go back up, right? So there's these two buttons. This button, I wish in every single car had this button. It's a button to make all the windows go down at once. Why don't we have this in all cars in the world? Why can't we, why do we have to put them all individually? I think that in all cars, 
I think in all cars, there should be an all windows down button, not just convertibles. But that means that Mini didn't put a, a switch for the back windows. So you have ones for the front windows, but the, the only way to put down the back windows is to put the both back down windows down. You, but then that means you can put the front windows back up, right? But the back windows still down. So not each person can put the windows back down. So that's a flaw, but I mean, I don't really think it matters since the people in the back don't really care about the windows. They just want to enjoy the open top Let's experience. Go get into the back seat. So you pull the switch, the seat goes up like a normal car. And it's actually pretty easy to get back here. I mean, I am five foot two. I have plenty of room. This is where that I would basically sit. Plenty of room. And it's actually very comfortable here. These seats in normal most convertibles, the seats are very firm, they're not comfortable, they're just very bad, it's not comfortable at all. But the back here, it's very comfortable back here. I am very perfectly uh, nice. I can sit back here for hours, no issues, nothing. I am really perfect back here. I think this is one of the best back seats in a convertible I've ever been in. It's really very comfortable What's back here. interesting back here is there's a lot of storage, yes, but there's only one cup holder. So that means that you and your other passenger We'll have to fight over that one cup holder. What I think that I should put my coffee in it, but I think that you should put your water in it. No, you, no, you. Now, additionally, you can fold the rear seats down from the back seat. Pull this lever, it pops open. Pull this lever, the other one pops open. And this means that you can fold it down for ease of access, which means that you can get a fully flat floor and that means you can carry stuff with you. I find that this is just useless feature because no one is really going to be carrying things in their Mini Cooper. But let's it's move good on to, to the hood in that with its weird latch. Okay, check this out. So you have this latch down here, but notice it says 2X. So if you, op if you pull once, like on a normal car, and if you come out, it won't let you open the hood apparently, because Mini calls this a safety feature. So you go back in again to open the hood and you pull again, and then you can walk back around to your Mini that where the hood is actually open. And you notice that the headlights don't come up with the hood. They're just these holes and you might be wondering well why Shep why do these headlights come up not the headlights come up well it's actually a law feature basically apparently for the US market headlights cannot come up with the hood they have to stay fixed so I know older minis the headlights come up well that law wasn't uh, enforced back then so that's why the there's holes in the headlights and always the headlights stay down but that's those are all the quirks and features about the Mini Cooper Convertible. To me, in my mind, I think this is a very, very good car for the money that you get. And to, for if I was going to be buying it, I would add a couple more options. Maybe get the John Cooper Works version, maybe the Cooper S. I think this Cooper version is just a little bit boring for, for other people. It might be perfect for them. Um, the small car market is actually like very, very hot right now. So I can see why this car is the, as the price as it is. And I, in my opinion, I think this is a great car and is a great buy for people that are looking into a small, fun car for on an island like Martha's Vineyard. I can see why people really love these. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. And and if you, if you have a car that you guys want me to review, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to review it. I have a, a couple of reviews coming up very soon. A couple more in the, la in the next couple of weeks. Three, four weeks. So stay tuned for those reviews. I'm leaving those as a surprise. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody.